Welcome to the Powerline Podcast, the official podcast of Greystone Power. I'm your host, Adam Elrod. On this month's episode, we're talking about Go, an electric vehicle program with Vice President of Corporate Services, James Wright. So let's jump right on in to episode number 27 of the Powerline Podcast. More and more, electric vehicles are gaining popularity. As your electric cooperative, Greystone works hard to support members' desire to start driving EVs. Today, I'm talking with Vice President of Corporate Services, James Wright, about a new program we've started for EVs. James, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks so much, Adam. Happy to be here. Would you like to tell members all about our new program at Greystone? Sure, Adam. We're real excited to announce our program. We call it GO, an electric vehicle program. And we're really looking at kind of a cradle to grave program with electric vehicles. So we're not just looking at EV rates, we're looking at employee education, member education, uh, employee and member engagement. We are looking at our EV rates, uh, but we really want to empower our members, our employees to make the best decisions possible as it relates to electric vehicles. Why is it important that Greystone take the step to create an electric vehicle program? That's a great question, Adam. You know, at the end of the day, electric distribution cooperatives are owned by the members they serve. And what we're seeing from our members is that there's some curiosity behind electric vehicles. We're seeing more of our members decide to purchase electric vehicles. We we just had our annual meeting and we had an electric vehicle expo and we had tremendous turnout and tremendous responses from members and it allowed us to, to engage with our members. And so, At the end of the day, we're in the business of fulfilling our members' needs. And so we think that there's a great opportunity here. If the members want to learn about electric vehicles, uh, we're here to help them learn about electric vehicles. We want to be their go-to when it comes to questions about electric vehicles. But as members are wondering about these things, they need somewhere they can turn to. Uh, there's so many different resources out there. Uh, there's so much on the internet about electric vehicles. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, our members are getting the correct information from people that are in the business of electricity, which we are. So um, it's important that we do this because our members are wanting this. Uh, they have questions about electric vehicles, and we're excited to offer this to our members. I think that's all great points for sure. And I know every co-op has a different approach to the transportation sector transition to EVs. What sets go apart? So I think I touched on it a little bit earlier, but what I would say sets go apart is we're really looking at the holistic experience. So we we are not just focusing on an EV rate. We're we're really, in my mind, first trying to lay a foundation. And and what is that? Well, it's employee and member education. I think that, uh, like G.I. Joe said, knowing is half the battle. And so we want members to understand electric vehicles, what they can do, what they can't do, uh, because I'll be the first to tell you, I don't think electric vehicles make sense in every use case. Uh, But there are certainly numerous, numerous cases uh, where electric vehicles do make sense. So uh, we're starting foundationally. We want to educate first, uh, and then we want to empower. We want to empower our employees, our members, to make uh, well-informed, educated decisions. And then from that, we're looking at things like uh, electric vehicle rates, which are often uh, time of use rates. We're looking at beneficial electrification. Uh, We're looking at what does that mean for our electric distribution system? Uh, Of course, the more electric vehicles on the grid, they're going to pull more power. So we want to make sure that that uh, we're prepared for that, that we're forward thinking. Uh, We also have uh, different locations where there are are fleets that are electrifying, and we want to make sure that we can educate and support that. So so we're really trying to take a holistic look at electric vehicles. And we're looking at empowerment, we're looking at empowerment, we're looking at uh, electric vehicle rates, we're looking at chargers, we're looking at rebates, uh, really trying to uh, cover everything you can think about when it comes to electric vehicles. Now, I think you just set a record here. I think that's the first time G.I. Joe has been quoted on the podcast, but I, <laughs> I like the quote, knowing is half the battle, and I would say you're, you have 
come as one of our experts at Greystone because members wouldn't know this, but you're an EV owner. And so what would you say is the benefits of an EV? Well, sure. Uh, I, th I think there are tremendous benefits. So um, I, I could almost say how much time do you have, but I'll, I'll try to be quick. So uh, first and foremost, for me, uh, it is convenience. Uh, you, you think about your time. Time is our most valuable resource. It doesn't matter who you are. We all have a finite amount of time. One of the great things about electric vehicles is uh, if you are able to, when you get home at night, you can plug in your electric vehicle and it'll charge up so that you can kind of go where you need to go the following day. So I'm not spending any time at a gas station. And you might say, well, a gas station doesn't take that long to fill up. And I would say it, it doesn't. But when you think about in the aggregate, of your entire life, how much time you spend at a gas station, I think it, it, you'd be amazed to think about how many hours, days, months you spend at a gas station in the entirety of your life. For me, when I get home, I plug in my car and I, I, I go into my house. Uh, when I get in the car the next day, it's ready to go. Uh, so time is huge. I think that people don't think about time as much as they should. Uh, the other thing is, uh, our members are very fortunate. Greystone's rates are the lowest in the state. So um, for my car, I would say it, it's probably eight to ten dollars to fill up my car. My car has a range of uh, call it 315 ish miles. Uh, so eight to ten dollars in this environment to fill up is, is very cost competitive. Um, another thing folks might not think about right now is uh, there's a lot of places opening up uh, that are trying to encourage electric vehicle owners to come there and they'll allow you to charge for free so if you can charge for free you're paying zero dollars uh, in, in an electric vehicle as opposed to gas uh, i would say that uh, another great benefit with electric vehicles is the low cost of maintenance when you've got electric vehicles uh, they quite often uh, don't require you to do much other than change your wiper fluid, your wipers, uh, your your brakes after maybe 100, 150, 200,000 miles, and your tires. Uh, there's no more oil changes. There's no you know transmission belts. There, there's nothing like that. So your maintenance is almost zero, quite honestly. Uh, and I think that's a huge thing with electric vehicles. And I will add, um, look at the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, now with electric vehicles, uh, we're bringing back tax credits uh, for some vehicles that didn't have them anymore. So uh, the cost of buying an EV is coming down. And what's really exciting is uh, with the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, starting in 2024, the dealerships will actually have a mechanism whereby they can deduct the amount of the tax credit at the time the transaction is taking place. So. Uh, of course, the, the new inflation reduction tax credits go into effect in uh, Jan 1, 2023, uh, but the, the law gives dealers about a year to get that system set up. So come 2024, all of a sudden, if you qualify for the maximum tax credit, uh, that's really making a big impact uh, on, on the purchase price. Uh, the other thing I think we're seeing that, that's very uh, exciting about electric vehicles is uh, with the Infl Inflation Reduction Act, we're seeing a whole lot of onshoring of jobs related to electric vehicles. So you're seeing companies starting to uh, grow their battery plants or build battery plants or start to build domestically. And so uh, all of a sudden you have a unique opportunity to really drive uh, an American car. One thing about Tesla that, that I think a lot of people don't realize is it's one of the most, if not the most American made car you can buy because it's an American company with factories in America. And so uh, in America, when you get a Tesla, you're getting a car that was built in America. So um, you're, you're helping contribute to um, jobs in America, which I think is huge. Uh, another exciting thing about EVs that, that uh, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't touch on is you're starting to see uh, vehicle to grid or vehicle to home applications. So kind of starting with the F-150 Lightning. Um, if you want to, your truck can basically serve as a generator for your house. Uh, so in, in the unlikely event, uh, and I know this podcast touches more than our membership. So in the unlikely event, you experience any kind of rolling blackout or power interruption during a storm, uh, you would be able to back up your house. And 
even if you don't think about the, the vehicle to grid or vehicle to home applications, um, you do have uh, applications for some vehicles where it's a vehicle to load. And what that means is you're taking some of the cars like the Hyundai Ionic 5 or the Kia EV6, and they're able to, for instance, provide you power uh, if you were camping. So it could uh, help you cook or, or maybe power a TV if you're tailgating. So there's a lot of great benefits for electric vehicles. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't add too that typically the acceleration on EVs is uh, is second to none. Uh, you look at some of the times that some of these EVs are, are putting out, and they're faster than what I would think of as a supercar. Uh, so th there's so so many benefits. I haven't even touched on the the long term positive environmental impacts associated with electric vehicles. Um, at the end of the day, one of the neat things about electric vehicles is Yes, it, it, it may cost a little bit more uh, and it may uh, environmentally cost a little bit more up front, but in the long term, an electric vehicle uh, only becomes greener. And why do I say that? Well, because when you are using the power system, our power system, our generation is only becoming greener. And so ultimately that's what's fueling these electric vehicles. And so as our energy portfolio becomes greener and greener, uh, they're being driven off of more renewables, whereas a, a, a gas vehicle is always going to have to run on gas. A diesel vehicle is always going to have to run on diesel. So uh, there's almost an exponential growth of positive environmental impact with electric vehicles, um, especially in the long term. I warned you I would have That's a long a, answer, Adam. <laughs> and, and hey, I'm good with that long answer because, you know, I. I'm not an EV owner, and I'll talk about that a little bit in here in just a second, but those are a ton of different benefits that you're not going to get in a pamphlet or a brochure. You're not going to get that just by watching a commercial on TV or online. So it's good for members, especially those who have no experience with an electric vehicle, to hear it from somebody who experiences one every day. And I would Certainly. say, I would imagine probably the majority of our members have never ridden in a EV and I would include myself in that. So that would be my next question. I think you touched on a little bit is what's the transition like going from a internal combustion engine to an electric vehicle? Sure. Uh, you know, I, I think the biggest thing most people think about still, and I know I said, I think it's going away a little bit, but it's that range anxiety. If, if folks have never been in an electric vehicle, uh, they're worried about how do I get from point A to point B. Uh, you know, it just seems a little different. Uh, but what I would tell you is uh, you you ultimately rely on the technology. And, and so you're you're having electric vehicles that, especially like a Tesla, for instance, there's a lot of vertical integration. And so your car is talking to the Tesla network, the supercharging network. And let's say you you put in a, you want to take your family to Disney World. Tesla will route you to Disney World based off of supercharger locations. Uh, Tesla's most recent software updates actually take into account grade, uh, wind, elevation, uh, you know, weight, uh, wind resistance on your vehicles. And so all of that in the background is being calculated and Tesla dynamically will tell you uh, where you need to, to charge. And if for some reason you've got kind of a heavier foot and you're using more energy, it'll route you to a different supercharger dynamically. Uh, it'll tell you how many cars are there. It'll tell you how long you need to stay. It'll tell you what state of charge you'll be at when you uh, ultimately leave and, and route you to the next station. And so at the end of the day, I think that's the thing most new EV owners have to understand. And, and the one thing I would say about that is we do that to an extent with gas cars because we all have that fuel gauge, right? And, and we just follow the fuel gauge. And when it gets a little bit low, or we all have different comfort levels on when we want to fill up. We, we get off the exit and all of a sudden we fill up and we're relying on that fuel gauge. Uh, think about the technology associated with that fuel gauge. I mean, it, there's not much going on there. Uh, when you buy an electric vehicle, you're getting access to state of the art technology with algorithms and, and, and networks and, and they're doing constant communication and calculation. So you just have to get comfortable with that, quite honestly. And I would say after a while, you don't even think about it. I mean, the way I look at it, I, I certainly trust 
my cars, navigation, calculations, algorithms, network, much more than uh, we still have a, a gas car at home as well. I trust our EV a whole lot more on range calculations than I do that gas car. So I'd say that's probably the biggest learning curve, um, fear that you have to overcome. But once you overcome that, I find that people just love electric vehicles. They trust electric vehicles. Um, I myself have driven multiple electric vehicles. I, I, honestly, I trust them all. Uh, you know, at Greystone, uh, we have a, a Bolt in our fleet, and um, I, I am just as comfortable driving the Chevy Bolt as I am driving the, the Tesla Model 3 that we have in the fleet. Uh, I really don't have a preference. Uh, I can I can do both, and I trust both, and, and I know how to drive both. But the biggest thing folks are going to have is, uh, it, it's all about the range anxiety. Once I get past that, I think they're they're absolutely fine. Um, I think there's a little bit of a learning curve uh, with batteries and and how to charge and when to charge and why to charge. Uh, I think that's a quick learning curve, though. Uh, I, I kind of think of my children. You know, they they know more about technology than I did coming up because they have access to you know the. Amazon Fire tablets and the uh, Apple iPads and all of those things. So it's it's second nature to them. Uh, and, and so they're not even going to question electric vehicles or have any concerns about batteries or anything else. You just have to be willing to learn. Um, and again, I think you have to understand the use cases for EVs. So what we see a lot now is uh, you're starting to see electric trucks. And I think electric trucks are great. I actually have a, a reservation in for uh, an electric truck. Um, but it, if I was going to tall very, very heavy loads that were not aerodynamic, I, an EV truck is not the way to go. So I think the other piece of it is, is you, you have people that buy these EVs because they're excited about it. They hear about the technology and they do absolutely zero research, whether that's um, you know, I live in an area where there's not a lot of uh, level three charging stations near me other than Tesla, and I buy a Hyundai Ionic 5, and so I'm limited in where I can charge. Uh, there, there's a lot of just small things that within a week or two, you've completely mastered. Um, I would say most of us now use different apps. There's an app called PlugShare that I can't recommend enough. Uh, it really is um, kind of like a crowdsourced, hey, here's where you can charge your EVs. You can provide real-time feedback if the chargers are working. You can list amenities. You can take pictures of what the EVs, uh, the chargers look like. You can kind of give instructions on, hey, the address says this, but to get there, you got to go behind the building. Or, you know, the address says this, but it's going to route you to here. So this is where you need to go. Um, so, you know, we've tried to create at Greystone kind of a frequently asked questions, one pager for, for new EV owners. I'd say there's called a handful of things that EV owners need to learn uh, and understand. And once they do that, they're fine. And so again, I think you're talking about range anxiety and it's really a misnomer. Uh, let me just add this too. I think there's this misconception that everybody needs to have a car that can go 300 miles. That's not the case. I think a lot of people would be fine with a car that has a range of 200 miles. Um, but you've got to get comfortable there. So, so it's range anxiety, and and to me, that's a that's a non-issue, especially once we get uh, more of the EV charging infrastructure built out, which is part of the infrastructure bill itself, um, and then the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. So, when we get that built out, that's going to nix the range anxiety. There's a learning curve with batteries, certainly, uh, and you want to know what kind of battery you have. And then the other thing I would say is. Um, you want to understand the charging network and what your car can do or can't do. Um, you know, you want to know about charging speeds and how long are you going to be at a charging station? Um, do you get an older car that maybe is a little nicer or do you get a newer car that uh, is more base, right? And maybe the price, maybe there's some price parity there. Uh, my default on EVs is you get the newest technology uh, because you're most likely going to have a better built-in uh, charging experience with newer technology. So it's kind of like iPhones. Um, by the time they put an iPhone out, it's already old. So you just you might as well get the newest, latest, greatest, uh, so that it it's it's better longer. Because ultimately, the charging experience. If you go on a trip, you don't want to be there for two hours. And, and I don't want to say that you would be there two hours. Um, 
on a charge, but there's a lot that you can learn about um, as it relates to charging state of charge. When do you get to a charging station in order to maximize your charging curve? These are things that you pick up very, very quickly. It may sound like a lot to folks, but I'm telling you within a week or two of driving an EV, you're going to be 95 to 99 percent of the way there. And I personally don't know anybody who's driven an EV who said, no, I need to go back to a gas car. I think predominantly folks like the electric vehicles uh, once they understand them. But it's like anything else, I'll, I'll do a quick tie into solar. Uh, what we find at Greystone is a lot of times people will sign up for solar and they won't call us uh, until after they've signed the contract. And then they call us with questions. And I really wish members would call us first so that we can answer those questions. And that's the same thing with an electric vehicle. Uh, everybody talks about EVs, everybody's excited about EVs, they want to buy EVs, but maybe pick up the phone and call us first and we'll walk you through some things about electric vehicles because once you sign the contract, it's a whole lot harder to return that car. And we just want to make sure that you're making the right choice for you. What I tell folks all the time is um, I can give generic information, but really at the end of the day, you care about what pertains to you and your family and your loved ones. And so if you will call and we can have a, a specific conversation, we'd be happy to do that. We're, we're, we're really here to make life better uh, in the communities that we serve, and we're here for our members. And that's what a lot of this is all about. That's great information. Uh, I, I would echo to, for a starting point for members, if, until you're ready to call in and ask questions, go to graystonepower.com slash EV. We have a tool on there that's state of the art. It has different models of EVs that you can look at price points and ranges and all sorts of things. But then you can also use our actual um, electric vehicle rate and see what is your cost savings compared to whatever car you're driving today. What does it cost in gas? What does it cost uh, yearly and monthly? You can do a lot of different things in that tool. So I would definitely check that out. And it has a map for uh, electric vehicle chargers. So if you're looking for chargers in your area, it's a good starting point. One last question, same last question that I ask every guest. Is there anything else you'd like to tell our members? You know, I would just say that uh, we live in a very exciting time as it relates to electric vehicles. Um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of moving pieces. There's a lot of information out there. And so we really want to be kind of your trusted uh, electric vehicle uh, go-to contact. So if you have questions, please reach out to us. I mean, I, I know I've mentioned a lot of different things, and uh, we've talked about federal laws. We've talked about, uh, you know, terms like charging curves other things like that. And so for someone who's never dealt with it, they might just think this is incredibly overwhelming. And certainly it can be, but not if you have the right resources. And we want Greystone to be a resource. You know, at the end of the day, we're owned by the members we serve and we take that to heart. Our, our kind of company uh, mission statement is making life better in the communities we serve. And we, we do really believe that electric vehicles is one way to do that. So if anybody has questions, please reach out to us. We are happy to get back to you. We're very excited about this program, but my goal is for every member to make an informed, empowered decision. And if we're doing that, then I think we're doing our job as an electric distribution cooperative. So you heard it here. Make sure you reach out if you have any kind of questions on electric vehicles. We'd love to assist. James, thank you so much for your time and being on uh, episode 27 of the podcast. Thank you for having me, Adam. Well, that is all the time we have today. Thank you for joining us for episode number 27 of the Powerline podcast. Make sure you hit subscribe so you get each new episode directly into your podcast feed. And go ahead and rate us five stars so other members will see us pop up in their feed as well. This has been the Powerline Podcast. Thanks for listening.